Hello everybody, it's Richard back for a new Panzer Corps series. Um, I kind of would like to have another Panzer Corps playthrough that's a uh, push, maybe pushing the, the limits of what you can do in the game. Uh, it's inspired by Ultimate Mode, that is this unofficial mode. It's an unofficial official mode hidden in Panzer Corps. Um, ultimate mode is actually not feasible at all. Like, I don't think you can get um, a decisive victory in ultimate mode. And probably getting a marginal victory uh, at Poznan would be very, very difficult. Um, so I'm going to make a tweak to it. But before I do that, I'll explain what ultimate mode is. So ultimate mode is you're playing field marshal level, 50% reduction. And experience gains. You're playing at a Rommel level, so 50% reduction in prestige. You are playing uh, at Manstein, so uh, all enemy units get plus five. The AI level is set to two, and the AI prestige is set to 150%. And I did do all of that uh, before loading this. Uh, and ultimate says minus five turns as well, which is completely unreasonable. There's just no way you can play with all those other restrictions and minus five turns. So my ultimate version is all of the things I just mentioned, except I'm going to give myself five more turns. I have no idea if this is possible. This could be a very short playthrough. Um, I might start running into issues immediately at Danzig. I, uh, I'll talk about that later, but um, maybe it's possible, but I think the five extra turns is necessary. Uh, I did get through Poznan. I did actually wipe the map and get a decisive. And I'll talk about, I have the uh, replay up, and I'll talk about key things to note uh, when playing this scenario. So the first thing you'll see, the opening moves are very similar. Uh, oh, my scout hit this back. That's very important to my plan. Uh, that way you can grab the airfield. And this fighter has no fuel, so I'm going to damage it, and it's going to run away. One of the, I actually um, played this with the base game on my iPad, and what I discovered, and this is the only time I will ever say this, defeating the Poznan scenario is substantially easier with Deductor's mod than in the base game, in Ultimate Mode. I don't think that will ever be a statement I'll make again, but it is unquestionably easier with Deductor's mod. I think it's because the scout cars are buffed and the mountain units are really strong with the Ductor's mod, and I exploit that to the max. <clears throat> uh, and I found it was, it was uh, the beginning was just, I, I would say it's a pretty tough fight uh, for my uh, units uh, in the base game. Um, but you can do it. I, 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 did, I was able to actually get a decisive victory and I wiped the map in 18 turns. But it was harder. It was just much harder. And I think it's because those two units are stronger. When I'm playing with this mod, there's a couple of things. I will reload. I do a couple forced loads in the first four turns. The the It's actually, this scenario is a lot of fun to play after the first four turns. And you don't need to reload at all. It's just tactical skill and strategic skill. Um, and it was actually the most fun I ever had playing Poznan was after turn four. The first four turns suck. Uh, the first turn is actually fine. I, I think the only time you would have to reload on the first turn is if you didn't force this anti-aircraft gun back. Um, then I would say you need to reload because a core part of my strategy is to grab the airfield. And I want to grab the airfield because I'm going to damage this plane and then it's going to fly away and I'm going to hunt it down. Um, so that, that's the only thing, uh, turn one. Oh, if you, for some reason, don't kill the cavalry in the south, you need to reload turn one. I don't normally, I have spent hours and hours and hours playing Poznan at ultimate mode, and, uh, it's rare that my scout doesn't push this back. It's maybe one time out of ten, and, uh, most of the time I kill the cavalry unit in the south, and it's not a big deal. So, um... It should be pretty rare to ever need to reload turn one. 
that's not where the difficulty comes in. So let's see what happens. Uh, I also discovered that for some reason, if you attack with the fighter bomber first, and then the fighter, the fighter does more damage. Maybe I'm just an idiot and I don't understand how mechanics works, but if someone could explain to me why that consistently is the case, that would be useful to know. Uh, the opening moves here are pretty standard. I'm going to bomb that with my tactical bomber. I absolutely have to kill that scout. I don't. It's blocking uh, movement towards the towards this hex over here. I got lucky here in that my mountain unit didn't take damage. Well, actually, I take that back. Nine times out of ten, the mountain unit doesn't take damage, assuming that the tactical bomber did its job. Um, and that's because they're buffed in the game, and that does make a difference. I found it made a huge difference. Now I can advance. You're going to see me buy three uh, 7.5 centimeter guns. This is a map that requires artillery. It's utterly hopeless if you don't get artillery. Uh, turn two is much trickier. There are a couple of areas you may have to reload more than once. Um, and I'll get to that when we get there. I memorize where the fighter... This is an important point. Um, I don't know if the fighter is guaranteed to go to that spot, so you may have to reload to hunt down where the fighter is. Uh, it took me two reloads to figure out where the fighter is. So so my plan is a little bit different from Bricada's. Bricada uh, banks on destroying the fighter turn one. In my experience, that's highly unlikely to happen to take out the fighter. Like It's probably a one out of six or one out of seven chance. So I would rather reload with stuff on turn two than turn one, because most of the time, turn one goes very smoothly. Turn two is where it's tricky. So if this fighter isn't in this spot, then you need to figure out where it is, and you need to kill it with a fighter bomber. We'll see why in a second. And uh, you have to make sure you do a modest amount of damage turn one, which almost always happens. The second thing that's going to cause the most frequent reloads is you have to destroy this unit turn two. It's a lot, it's easy to do if it's not Manstein, but it's really difficult to do if it's Manstein. I think that there are, I think I messed up the order here. There's a way to do this that's better, and I didn't think of it until I was watching the replay. So it's very important that you dig it out completely to reduce entrenchment. And now I should be able to hit it and move it out of the city. So uh, I get mass attack bonus here. So this is all correct. The mistake I made was I don't need more mass attack. Well, actually, I could bring this tank here. So the mistake I made is I brought this tank here. I should bring this tank here for mass attack bonus. Then I should attack with the mountain units here. And then I should bring uh, this infantry here. And then, uh, let's see, this can move six. One, two, three, four, five, six. If I bring this infantry here and then attack it again with mass attack bonus, <clears throat> it'll probably force it back if you don't kill it. And then if I force it back, one, two, three, four, five, six, then this tank can come up and almost certainly finish it. I think this is a way to reduce reloads. However, Sometimes bad things happen. You might get a rugged defense, which means the unit won't retreat, or you just don't do a lot of damage. Um, I don't think it's super likely unless the artillery sucked at suppression. And I had to buy 7.5, so it's higher. It's more likely than not that my suppression isn't good enough. In the base game, this is not a problem because I have 10.5 centimeter because I can afford to buy it. Uh, so you may have to reload for slightly better suppression. The suppression is probably the key point here. Um, and getting a little damage from your tactical bomber is essential as well. I uh, On this particular shot, I didn't have to reload, but when I was doing practice runs, I had to, I had to reload frequently because I wasn't killing this. If you don't kill this unit, the fighters activate and wreck your units. It's really terrible. Uh, they're 15 strength fighters and they can get huge hits. It's so RNG heavy. It's not, it, you can't, you don't want that to happen. 
So let's see how this goes. I suppressed it, I think, completely. Oh, I see what I did. I forced it onto the hill. That was smart. And then I get mass attack bonus this way. Oh, yeah. And then I sent my reconnaissance plane to do more damage. That was smart, because it's on a hill. Okay, and then I got lucky. So if... Uh, but the thing is, that is more lucky than doing it the other way, I said. The other reload point, if you take damage on your scout here, I would reload. I would say like eight times out of nine or so, um, I don't take damage. So it's really unfortunate if you take damage here. Um, it's you want you're gonna need some strength on your scout and taking a chip shot here isn't helpful so I would reload there I didn't have to here uh, the other thing is uh, by destroying that unit in the south the only thing with envision range are these two uh, the fighter will not attack the scout because of my fighter and that's really important the other thing is uh, because this is in vision range um, this will sometimes trigger and attack it. I don't know what the formula is for it, but you really want this unit to attack your unit. So, um, and it does here, but I've seen it sometimes not attack, so I'm not sure what triggers it. So this is just a trap. I want this weakened anti-aircraft to attack this so he doesn't overstrengthen it, and I want his fighter to move away because there's no targets. Uh, you can see that I'm moving infantry in, and I'm shifting anti-tank up north. And now I'm moving. So there's a couple of reload spots in turn two. But I think there's a way to reduce the need for it. So you shouldn't have to do it more than once, I think. So the fighter moves away, because it doesn't have an easy target. That's, that's why you have to kill that anti-tank in the south. And then the anti-aircraft takes a shot, doesn't do any damage. Most of the time it doesn't do any damage. So I find the first four turns suck because there's some RNG heavy issues that interfere with, with getting through it. It's a lot of fun after the first four turns. So you absolutely need to kill that anti-aircraft gun now, and then you have to move uh, you have to move the scout car away. A couple of things I will mention. In the base game that doesn't happen, the anti-tank attacks your scout car. Um, I think it's because the, there are enough stat differences between the two that the scout car is stronger in Deductor's Mod and it might be just enough to deter the anti-tank from attacking. All I know is I'm really happy that it didn't attack for two turns. So instead, the AI just reinforces it. And I'm not interested in killing the anti-tank right away. I'm interested in killing the anti-aircraft, so that's okay. So you might have a different experience in the base game. Next thing is I need to bombard this major objective. And I'm setting up my armor as a screen. And I'm blocking access to my artillery. So now I have to do the process of digging this infantry out. I don't intend it. It's not necessary to kill this infantry. Um, all that's really necessary is to begin digging it out. Because it's dug in pretty badly. Because the uh, plane went up north, you can park a tactical bomber over that infantry. Oh, uh, because of the fact that the cavalry is moving, I'm using the trap that I used in my Poznan playthrough with the uh, Doctor's Mod. And what it does is it stops the bomber from coming south. I would say out of all of the things that are necessary in the first three turns, that one is second most important. The most important, of course, is killing a fighter. Two 15-strength fighters running around is going to destroy you, so you can't let that happen. Kill the fighter. The second thing that has to happen is you have to trap the bomber. 
The reason you have to trap the bomber is so that you can kill it the next turn. And the only way to trap the bomber is to ambush it with your fighter bomber. And the route uh, that the, fight the bomber is going to take is straight south. So you can ambush it pretty easily out of vision range. Uh, the fighter will probably get a chip shot in on you, but that's okay because um, if it doesn't give you, a, if if the fighter goes south and damages your artillery too much, just reload. I find a lot of times the fighter goes after artillery and doesn't do a whole lot of damage. So that's just like a weird tactical exploit that I use. Let's proceed. So that's where I move my fighter bomber to intercept the bomber. And then uh, I try to move my fighter to protect my units, but I, I put it in the wrong place. I should have moved it somewhere else. And now I'm setting up an attack on this city. And this tactical bomber is too far south for the fighter to reach. I think. Yeah, well, actually, it could reach. So I put the fighter in the wrong spot. If I put the fighter here, it would have gone a lot better for me. But I got lucky that no damage was done. So that's a tactical improvement you could do. And it would go better. Um, this was very unusual. I don't know how to explain it. I don't understand the AI's behavior. Uh, the tankette and the cavalry all went north. That's very unusual. Usually a couple will go north or one will go north and somebody goes south. I don't know if it's because the fighter went down south and found all of my artillery and the AI did some calculation where attacking in the south would be bad. Maybe that's a good, that's a good calculation. Um, so what's weird about that is I think it's a good thing and you'll see why. We'll see what I do next. What I do next, I attack the uh, the bomber. I, I, I need to take the bomber out now. This is probably the last reload spot. You uh, Reload until you kill the bomber. Because you don't really have time to track it down. So once the bomber goes, that's the most dangerous unit on the allied side. Um... I also discovered, I didn't realize everybody had gone north, so because of that, it opens up a lot of possibilities for me. <clears throat> so, um, okay, I should mention something that's a little different. Uh, my intention is to hold this airfield. <clears throat> the reason for that is taking this is really not easy, because I only have a couple of units that can get in range. And the uh, anti-tank is on an open hex, so it makes it even more difficult. I need an airfield for my planes. So I'm going to grab this one, stick my artillery here, and kind of protect my units. And it's actually uh, a good decision because uh, the AI doesn't actually like attacking my scout car, which is really interesting. So, uh, and even if they did, I'm going to have backing artillery, and it's probably going to go well for me if they attack. By holding this airfield, it lets my planes reach any part of the relevant map. So that's why I'm doing it. Uh, let's proceed. I'm kind of scooting in out of vision range. I don't want that fighter to attack. Uh, now, I, I just want to try to kill this unit. I think you can kill this unit, especially if you have 10.5. Um, you're going to see I had to use like almost all of my units to kill it, but it denies a lot of vision, so. I had perfectly suppressed it, so I got a nice, um, I got a nice little shot there, and I have one artillery piece left. So now I can start pushing this infantry back and try to kill it with my tanks. This is called staggered attacking. <laughs> A new tactical term. I'm just going to keep attacking with my mobile units until I kill it. 
I don't think damage matters that much here. Uh, also notice I'm blocking uh, from an attack from up north. Obviously, uh, there's an aircraft here and it sees all this artillery. Uh, and I want to make sure cavalry doesn't try to sneak and hit, and hit me in the back. So as you can see, this infantry keeps getting pushed back. You might think this is a bad thing. Um, I don't think it's a bad thing at all because one of my tanks needs to come over and grab the airfield over here. So this is just helping me on that path. And taking a chip shot there is not a big deal. Then the fighter flew back. Here, I think if you took a chip shot, it's okay. Um, I didn't mind the fighter attacking there. And then after this, everything after this, we're on turn five, is really just about strategy and tactics. And it was a lot of fun and it was very challenging. Um, you kind of have to focus one unit at a time. I, I didn't do so well up here because I was not concentrating that well, but I was still able to eventually grind some units down. So let's see what happens. So I'm worried about this 16 strength, or it was a 16 strength tankette, and I need to start. I thought this was something I should work on. I was hoping for some chip damage. Um, interestingly enough, they didn't go after my uh, artillery. So it's, uh, so I, you know, now it's, I, I need to, there's a fighter and I need to do something with this fighter. So I know where this fighter is going and my, uh, uh, tactical bomber is going to, my fighter bomber is going to follow it there and kill it. And then I will control the air. Next, the cavalry unit did come south, but because there was this wall of artillery, it didn't attack. That was a good thing because it's it's allowing me to attack this unit separated away from everything else. And as you can see, the mountain unit was baller. Like a, this unit was really strong. And now that cavalry unit is doomed. It took all of my artillery and two infantry, but I managed to kill it. So the way north is open. So my strategy isn't to rush to the objectives right away because I have to kill the enemy units first. But I ended up getting there pretty quickly anyway, but the AI behaved weird. We'll talk about that. So one tank is going to go up here. The other tank is going to go to the airfield over here. My mountain units plan to just move up north. My tank is going to move up north. I need to get him uh, to kind of hit the artillery uh, at Poz not Poznan, the other city. And now my artillery can move into range to hit that anti-aircraft gun. And I made a mistake. I should not have moved this infantry here. That was, uh, I don't think that was wise. I think it was very risky. That this whole tactical situation could be played better. Oh, I see. The cavalry can't see the artillery. Okay. This happened. This I didn't expect. So there is an ambush. Uh, that was a good thing because uh, I did like five damage and I took two. Those mountain units are vicious. The mountain units are the heroes of, of this play of this scenario. So then I sent my fighter bomber up here. If you have to reload to kill it, I think that's a small thing. I didn't have to here. Um, you have to make sure you kill that fighter. So next, uh, because the cavalry unit went away, I can start concentrating on these two. I thought I could damage this tank and it didn't work out. Now I've got them surrounded. Uh, because I have that airfield, my planes can reload. 
So I'm lucky that I managed to ambush that cavalry. There's my mountain units. So, so my plan was I wanted to block reinforcements on the cavalry unit. You'll see this in a second. I'm going to send my infantry up here. This is a trick I learned from Goose, I believe. And the, uh, the idea, or I learned it from Deductor, and the idea is to prevent reinforcements from happening. Um, and the AI might attack me again, and I get a, I get a shot at doing damage with my artillery. So, um, and it worked pretty well. And I've already conquered that southern airfield. I don't mind if my fighter bomber takes damage here because the usefulness of the fighter bomber is way reduced once the air force is gone. So that's what happened. I did two damage to the uh, cavalry and the cavalry did two damage to my infantry, but the cavalry is now vulnerable. I can theoretically kill it. And I do kill it this turn. And so that's the last of their eyes, which is good. My, then my scout car uh, showed up big and killed the cavalry. And now the way north is open. I got a chip shot here on a garrison unit, so two damage is permanent, which is nice. And next, I need to. Uh, I need to, this anti tank is really dangerous. I need to. I need to do something with it. Now it's blocked from reinforcing. That's a garrison unit, so any damage I do to it is permanent. I actually probably kill that this turn. So the way north is open over here as well. My infantry takes a lot of damage, but uh with the AI moving around and doing all kinds of stuff, they took damage as well, which accelerated the collapse of that location. And my Air Force is now free to terrorize the enemy. So I think this was going well. Uh, I think, I, I do think I destroyed the tankette here. And uh, the anti-tank is, is much, much weaker as well. This, this little uh, artillery unit came up north and uh, helped kill this tankette. I'm really happy with how that worked. And my scout is doing uh, a lot of heavy lifting up north. And then I take the city, but yep, it's all good. He can't reinforce. The anti-tank is going down next turn. Seize that city. And we're already assaulting here. With five more turns, I can take my time, but it's, I don't know, it's its a little risky. Um, for some reason, oh, and I managed to block Poznan. <laughs> uh, that was nice. And I know that the Poznan infantry won't attack. I exploit a, a things like that, knowing what won't attack. And then uh, the AI is thinking here. It's still thinking. It, it thinks, thinks for a long, long time, time and it buys one unit. unit. 
Uh, I remember the AI buying a lot of units around this city, but for some reason the AI only bought an anti-tank gun, and I'm not sure why. But I guarantee you if it had bought more units, it would have been a real nasty fight to get the decisive. So, you know, I, I, don't, I don't really know what's going on with that or why the AI only bought an anti-tank. It's possible that it buys more after turn 8, and it's just it buys one. I thought it bought a unit at turn 6, and it, and I think it must have because there was an anti-tank at that city. But then it didn't buy any more on turn 8, which I thought was the trigger point. So there might be complicated mechanics happening with reinforcements and purchases with plus 5 turns that I'm not familiar with. I'm not sure, but all I know is... It made my life a lot easier. I will also say that when I played this uh, with the base game, they did reinforce around that city. So I don't know why, you know, this is turn 10 before I close in on the city. I don't know why uh, reinforcements weren't purchased. I, I have no explanation for that, but in the base game, there was reinforcements. They bought an anti-tank and an anti-aircraft. So it was a brutal, grinding experience getting this location. Now, I did manage to wipe the map in 18 turns, but I took a lot more damage. So here, you know, we're in easy mode, basically. Um, I've got two artillery pieces, and my air force is free to bombard. Uh, and I don't really have a whole lot to say. We could fast forward. The only other thing I would mention is that I should... Let me back up just a smidge. Uh, here. The mistake I made is I should have sent my scout car south to block this hex. And then I could just take some pot shots at this anti-aircraft gun. I can use my anti-tank in my infantry to take out um, the anti-aircraft gun. That's a strategic error I made, but I was not punished for it. And again, I don't know why. The AI did not buy anything down here. So there was some weird behavior. But if I was to do this again, the scout car would scoot down here and block this hex. And then I just have to clean up. And my scout car can just like take pot shots at this anti-aircraft gun as I wait. Um, and of course I was gambling on my uh, Panzer II surviving and my Panzer II did very well if uh, this might be the last reload point if for some reason you were pushed back then I would reload I don't know how frequent that would be a problem but it could be a problem So yeah, so now I gang up on the artillery. Once the artillery goes, uh, you're, in, you're in cruise control at that point. Turn 11 is when I know for a fact I'm going to get both objectives. It's going to be a long process because I have to take out units one by one. See, I don't think my scout car was necessary here because I had my anti-tank. Um, so I... Let's fast forward. Yep, I put uh, one last thing I did was uh, I forced it on the river. And then I hoped it stayed on the river. But he didn't. The AI just moved it back and damaged the, the fighter bomber. But, you know, now I can attack it anyway. It's, it's weaker now, so I have a chance of destroying it. I think, yeah, and then his anti-tank blasts my uh, Panzer II. But my Panzer II's value is really small at this point. So getting damaged is not a big deal. Let's fast forward. Uh, I, yeah, I'm on turn 12 and I still haven't taken this out. <laughs> but, but my Air Force is free to uh, 
you know, continue digging it out. It's a very slow grind. I have to say, my Panzer 1s uh, did pretty well most of the scenario. I have to block the city twice, just in case the anti-tank pushes a tank away. I'm also uh, putting this here to possibly run interference on the tankette. I'm about to finish this off. Yep. So that went very well. So now my Air Force is free to attack Poznan, which is necessary. Let's fast forward. We're still waiting for the AI to buy. I'm sending my scout south because I want to block that hex. And potentially I might be able to take those two middle objectives. I wasn't sure at this point if I could, but I was going to try. We're now at turn 13, I think. So the next most dangerous unit is the anti-tank, and I need to... Um, I need to kind of box it in and uh, take it out. And that's what I bring this guy for. Now, I damaged this tankette enough that I felt comfortable moving my mountain unit here on a suppressed anti-tank, and that worked very well. So now if the tankette comes out to hit me, it shouldn't be as annoying. I was waiting for this, uh, and then I got another good hit. So, I'm, so the tankette's at 10 strength. So now it's, it's not crazy if my mountain unit gets attacked. And to protect it further, I attacked with my Panzer One, and I got lucky and killed it. That was good. Um, so now my mountain unit is safe. It's going to take some damage from the tankette, but um, just pulling the tank out after I had damaged it is a big win. Because it's at 8 strength, so I can kill it now. So that was a nice little trick. We can fast forward... And I'm about to kill it. Yeah, the mountain units were amazing. I mean, they really did a lot of damage. My scout was the second most amazing unit. <laughs> I feel like half the units were destroyed by those two. And after this, uh, it's just a matter of digging out units. Uh, we're on turn 14. As you can see, by turn 14... Uh, I'm very aggressively beginning to dig units out. Let me move forward. I'm, I've been taking some pot shots on the anti-aircraft, and the scout's been doing very well. So, I think my scout was like over one star at the end of the scenario. Um, and that's with 50% reduction in experience. Yeah, I think the rest of it's just digging out. Um, da, da, da. Digging out. Turn, uh, turn 16. So I could have gotten a decisive here in 16 turns. Not bad. Uh, it might be possible to do in 15, possibly 14. But 14 is probably pushing it, in my opinion. Um, I did it in 16, and I feel like that was pretty miraculous. Mostly because the AI didn't buy any units, and I don't know why. So I have three more turns, so I feel pretty good about taking the airfield at least. And then the AI started acting weird again and moved the infantry out for some reason. But I think I even if it hadn't moved out... Uh, with two artillery pieces and two planes, I would have been able to dig them out and probably kill the infantry in 19. So let's move forward. So I kill uh, this infantry on turn 17. Uh, 
Uh, da, da, da. Let's move forward. The anti-aircraft is out. He moves out of the city. And I'm very close to wiping the map here. Yeah, it's turn 18, and then uh, I got an excellent hit with my artillery, and that was game over. My regular Y mark got the job done. The other thing is, I thought I had way too much prestige, because you can see I've got like 400 something prestige. But I'm so used to playing at 25% prestige that Rommel feels like way too much prestige. <laughs> That that's something I was surprised by. That that was the end of my um, my playthrough. Um, so what I learned is I I figured out garrison units. So you know when you attack a garrison unit and you do damage to them, it's permanent, which is useful to know. Uh, I think in the beginning you have to learn some tricks on where units are going when they retreat. So you can hunt down planes. Um, some of you are wondering why I didn't buy a second fighter like Ricotta did. But you have to remember, he's playing on Manstein. He has 100% prestige, so he could afford to buy a fighter. I couldn't afford to buy a fighter because I needed artillery. And keep in mind, I'm getting the cheapest artillery. So my suppression isn't that great. Um, in the base game, I was able to buy four artillery pieces instead of three. And every artillery piece but the starting one was a 10.5. And I desperately needed that 10.5 to help suppress units and take the final objectives. Um, in this particular playthrough, I, I, I only have 7.5 for quite some time. So um, I need to control the air battle with just one fighter. And I showed you some clever tricks on how to make that work. I don't think, if you were playing on Manstein, I don't think you have to kill the first fighter. You can hunt down that fighter. The tricky thing is making sure that uh, on at the end of turn two, that the fighter has no targets. That's really important. And then on turn three, you need to set a bomber trap. And I showed you a way to do that that will work every single time. You, you approach that city in the east. There's a bunch of units in vision range. You park a fighter bomber on the road there, and that bomber will come and get ambushed. Then on the next turn, you need to kill the bomber. Uh, and by doing that, all that's left is hunting down the last fighter. Uh, and you have a decent chance of doing that if you get a good hit and then you track it down to kill it at its airfield. Um, by turn six, you should have every plane destroyed. And if you do that, it makes the scenario a lot easier. Um, obviously, I bought a bunch of artillery. I think the theme of this playthrough is going to be lots of artillery. It's going to be really tricky because I don't have mobile artillery. But with five more turns, I might be able to make it work. Um, the other thing I learned is that mountain unit, my mountain unit is extremely valuable, and my scout was extremely strong. At 50% prestige reduction, uh, my scout... Um, was that one star of experience. Actually, let me pull that up while I have everyone's attention. Uh, da, da, da. I can show you uh, the aftermath. Because I'm sure you guys are interested in that. Like, how much damage did I take? Um, I can tell you I took substantially less damage with Deductor's Mod than the, um, than I did with the base game. Which is very interesting because I had one more unit and I had better, I had better artillery. But I think that's just because the AI didn't... I think it's because the AI didn't spawn units around the city and I don't know why. I think I would have had a hell of a fight getting the decisive if it had. Um, yes, this is it. This is Danzig. And I can show you the aftermath. Uh, so I have 497 prestige. 
that seems like an awful lot of prestige to me, but that's probably below um, normal Rommel. You can have like 530 or so. Um, but if you're playing a normal Rommel, you're buying, I think, one fewer unit. I'm not sure. Oh, it's lower because deductor's units are more expensive. That's why it's lower. So I took a total of 6 plus 2 is 8 plus 5 is 13. I don't care about these tanks. I'm going to get rid of them. Uh, plus 3 uh, is 11, right? 6 plus 5 is 11. Wait. Do your math. 11 plus 3 is 14. Plus 2 is 16. I took 17 core units worth of damage. That's really impressive. And a couple of those points were a little unlucky. But I'm not going to complain too badly because my mountain unit took a lot of damage. Like a lot of damage. Uh, so I need more artillery. I need at least two more towed. Um, so I should try buying that. Not that. I can't. I can't afford 10.5. So, so I could buy. I could buy this. And then how much is it? I don't have enough prestige, but I can sell this unit. I can sell you, and then I can buy you. So um, I also made sure I got an SE unit, because I'm going to need all the help I can get. Um, and I got a mountain unit, which is good. They're, they're just tougher. So I actually have my entire core filled out. Um, the question is, do I sell my tank? If I had another core slot, how much is it to upgrade this? Ah. 83. So when I get six of these, I'm going to need six times 83. So I'm going to need, you know, 500 prestige to upgrade my 7.5. But... Um, I need at least six, and I need... So I have to think about future purchases, even though I'm not even sure I'm going to survive this map, to be honest with you. Uh, I have to think about future purchases, like, at Lodz, am I getting an 88 gun? Is that is that actually the best plan? I'm not convinced that's the best plan. Uh, at Piatic, I probably want an 88 gun, but I also might want a second fighter. So those are all the things I'm thinking about. Um, I, I think what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll, I'll disband this, and then uh, I'll buy infantry. Because I think it would be a good idea to have one more infantry. And I have 66 prestige. Um, obviously, I'm not, I'm not going to blow it on. Uh, uh, look at my scout. Over one star after that scenario. Um, but, 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 who else in my fighter? Okay. Actually, it's kind of hilarious. Uh, my, uh, Rudel is actually one star. And this is at field marshal level. So Rudel would have been maxed out if it, if it was regular experience. He had some pretty nice hits. This guy is at 126. That's pretty good. Um... Yeah, and how much is a tactical bomber? 3E30, yeah. So, I'm thinking that I have the artillery I need. I think I need an 88 gun, but I don't necessarily need it next scenario. And I think I need another fighter. And I need another fighter for Piatic, because there's going to be these 15 strength fighters, and... Um, if I can't trap it with my 88 gun, um, I might be having issues. Uh, you know, I'm going to have to always have one fighter escorting my tactical bomber. Now, thankfully at Piatek, there's only one fighter at a time. So that's something to think about. Piatek is, uh, that's so far in the future, I don't know. Um, I don't know how I'm going to deal with that. So this is the situation. I've gotten rid of every one of my useless units. 
Um, I have 66 prestige. Uh, I have an SE unit. Um, I wish I could buy another tactical bomber, but I don't have the money. If I try over strengthening, it costs 27. And I don't think it's worth it. So, so this is going to be uh, my this is going to be my deployment for this scenario. Um, six artillery plus the one up north. Um, I am going to have to think. I've done a trial, like the start of a trial run on my iPad on this map, and uh, what I've learned is that you are not allowed to make any mistakes. If you make any mistakes on this map, your units will get destroyed. Um, I don't know if an extra five turns is enough. I may have to think very creatively, but um, uh, let's just say it's very interesting fighting, and uh, it, it, it's taking like um, it's taking a lot of thought and clever ideas for me to ex to, to like make progress. Um, so I'm interested to talk about, uh, I'll try not to do a replay next time. I did a replay for Poznan because, uh, there's a lot of, there was a lot of practice and then I never knew when I would be ready to really finish the scenario. So I kept, I kept restarting it because I kept making mistakes. And then eventually I got to the point where I didn't make any mistakes, but I was like at turn five and then I just wanted to finish the scenario. Because I put like six hours of work into it. So um, this one, at least I control deployment spots and I have a lot more artillery. Um, I do know that I need to exploit this terrain. I have a bunch of infantry but if I put infantry in an open hex, I have to have two pieces of artillery on it. It's very, very dangerous otherwise. I could put my scout on an open hex, but I have to be careful about that because there's um, a 7TP. So uh, my anti-tank or my tactical bomber has to do something about the 7TP. I don't know how I'm going to play this map. Um, this is fine, like this little defensive line. But I really want this. So, um, I, I definitely think you can get this without too much problems, without too many problems. But then the question is, if I move in too close, the, there's, there's artillery that can hit me. This one's not the problem, it's this one. So, um, just at the abstract level, I could put infantry here. What I probably want is I probably want an anti-tank. I don't know what I want. <laughs> um, if I get too close to this objective, this artillery is going to destroy me. So a better plan might be... Um, Anti-tank gun here, infantry here, infantry here, and then scout here, and infantry here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And all of my artillery is lined up like this. But the only issue is, if I do it that way, I can get outflanked in the south. That's the only problem. I don't know how comfortable I feel putting infantry in the countryside. Well, actually, wait a minute. That, if I put the anti-tank here, then I don't have to worry about getting outflanked. Okay, so anti-tank here, mountain unit here. Oh, no, I'm looking at it this way. Uh, yeah, I could get outflanked. I might get outflanked this way. That's the only issue. And I would be worried if I go one level up, I'm worried that the artillery would come forward and hit me. So if I put infantry here, inf infantry here, anti-tank here, and I just hold the line, 
let's say I put two uh, artillery pieces here, then I can put um, my scout car here, infantry here, and then I can have one, two, three, four, five, six, Um, actually, wait, there might be a better idea. I could put infantry here, infantry here, anti-tank here. I could snatch this with my scout and pull out and then move it up here. That would probably be possible. And then I would have, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. That would be a wall, of, and that that would be insane. So I would have the two artillery pieces I'd send north would end up here. One, two. Then I would uh, park an artillery here as bait. No, I put infantry here. I put infantry here as bait, backed up by two pieces of artillery. I think that would work. Scout car. Actually, I'll put my scout car here so they can't sneak in. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, one, two, three, four, five. I could uh, have a sixth artillery piece hanging in the back. who either protects my infantry or is assaulting this location. I guess the question is, after I get this formation, how do I make progress? This group breaks here, and then what? It goes after the airfield. If I take out the anti-aircraft gun, then my bombers go in and wipe out this defensive line. Or the artillery piece. This artillery piece is going to be a problem. So. Probably take out anti-aircraft gun, then take out artillery if possible. Uh, and then, and then if you do that, the position is pretty exposed. But the problem is, you know, I only have 19 turns. If I if I set up this kind of defensive line, I don't have to worry about getting outflanked. But then, how do I seize all these objectives? See that's where that's where I'm 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 not sure what to do. The alternative is, um, let me take a look at this terrain. These are hills, and this is open. The problem is, if I put an infantry here, this there's artillery, and then there's cavalry. If I could outflank in the south. That would be great, but I am not at all confident I can do that. So, this is what I'm thinking. Maybe I have two artillery pieces here, my mountain troops here, anti-tank here, infantry here. So if somebody tries to sneak around and hit my infantry, there's two artillery. Then I'll have... Um, If I have troops here, they can't outflank me. So I can put, uh, how many infantry do I have? I have five infantry. So I can put my third infantry here. And then it would probably be convenient to have my scout car here. Let's see, hills. Are these both hills? Yeah, what if I took uh, two of the remaining infantry, put them here, and my scout car here? Can't get outflanked this way. It's going to be really difficult if I put... Um, if I race with trucks with my infantry here. And I'm going to have two artillery. I could just put it... I could just put infantry here with two artillery. And if I do that, they definitely can't outflank me. Oh, but this bridge. They could outflank me at the bridge. Um, so I would have to put infantry here backed by... 
if I have my scout here, they can't get in. So I, I have to put two artillery pieces here and maybe my SE unit will go here. As a mountain troop, it would be pretty good. But the SE being here would also be pretty good. Or, or I put two infantries here in the hills, scout here, artillery piece here. And because of the fact that I'm going to block access to the back, then I can put two artillery here, one infantry here, and then uh, let's see, two down here, four, five. I can make a wall. I can put my infantry here, have, you know, let's see. One, two, three, four. And then I can pull them back. This could be a very solid line. It's very flexible. And then grind my way here. You know, maybe by nine turns, I wipe everything out here. And then I start working on these objectives. I'm worried though about um, if I overreach with with a push here, there's units that can attack me. I might need Rudel to scout and tell me where everything is. So those are my plans. I need to use the terrain. I have to pay attention to, to where units are. Um, my, my concern is if I don't aggressively push here, I may not clean this up in time. So I may not be able to attack in the south. I may have to establish a defensive perimeter, infantry, infantry, anti-tank. He, he can, can see, see everything, everything now. Uh, maybe, maybe maybe I don't put anything in the south and I just concentrate on holding the middle and close the line up north. I'm not sure. That's going to be really tricky to deal with. If I put an infantry in an open hex without two artillery pieces, these tanks are going to come out and hurt me. That's the only problem. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Richard out.